Did there come a time where you started to wonder where Carol was? Yes, um, we had watched it, a movie on the video. We had a video for Sleeping Beauty. And, uh, kitchen and noticed what time it was, but I said, gee, Carrie's not home yet. And that's when we became alarmed. I saw my daughter's Volkswagen in the cul de sac. Did you approach the car at that I slowed down and I stopped my car. And I stopped it because I wanted to, I, I knew. You suspect your daughter was not alive? I knew. I walked up to the officer, who is a commanding officer, and I looked at him. I'm man to man, eye to eye. And he started crying. And he told her my daughter was dead. Did you then tell your family? Yes. While we're talking, Jason had went on back into the house, left me out there on the porch by myself. Then the last question he asked me was, well, is your mother and father home? And that time he was still wobbling his head back and forth looking to the house when he asked that question. What happened then? Well, he kind of turned around, so I started to close the door. But it, I felt a push on the other side. He had approached the door and pushed it open with his hand. He closed the door behind him and threatened. He said, I have a knife. I hurt your brother and you if you don't cooperate. He started rubbing my breast and my back. And what happened then? When he had told me to get down on the floor and I didn't respond, so he pushed me down onto the floor. He started unbuttoning my pants and started to pull my jeans off. And what, what did you do? What did I do? I closed my legs and rolled over. What happened then? He rolled me back onto the mat, to my back. He took his fist and had punched me in the forehead because I wouldn't take my jeans off as he requested. By that time, he started unbuckling his belt and unbuttoning his pants that he had on and his zip, unzipped his zip. Did you see him do this? Yes, I did. What happened then? He told me, take your panties off, you bitch. So literally what he said. What happened then? I was on the back, on my back. I yelled out for Jason twice. I said, Jason, Jason, help me. What happened then? He grabbed my ankles and pulled me down. In the same motion, he kind of got on top of me and started to try to kiss me. What did you do? I tried to push him away or, you know, move my head. What happened then? He put the blankets, the corner edge of the blanket in the sheet of my mouth and put my arm behind me and held both of my wrists with his hand on one side of me. You okay, know, while he was doing this, he was uh, basically on top of you, correct? Or holding me down. I mean, he was moving so he could do this, but... What happened then? He kissed and touched my breath, and then he pulled my underwear down. And he had oral sex with... Okay. What happened after he had oral sex with you? Then he had sex with me. Okay, vaginal sex? Yes. After he had vaginal sex with you, what happened then? He, he rolled me over and kind of pushed me up the side of the bed. And then, and, and then he had anal sex with me. Did he ejaculate? I think so. 
What happened then? After that, he just kind of pushed me aside and got up and to leave. Did he say anything before he left? Yes. What did he say? He said that to go ahead and tell Ted because no one would believe me anyway. Ted was your boyfriend? Yes. Did you report this to the River Falls Police? Yes. Did anyone go with you when you reported this? Yes, Ted. Why did you report this on, on March 18th? Because everyone encouraged me to do so, except my dad, and, and I wanted to do the right thing. Why didn't you report it earlier than March 18th? I just couldn't even think about it then. Force his penis in my mouth, and he would... He would hold my head down. Oh. I may be sick here. And he would say, and I would want up. And he wouldn't let me up. He would just, and I'd be gagging. I would be thinking he was gagging me to death. I would feel it. I mean, he, he would just hold my head down, and I'd want up. He wouldn't let me up. And he told me, that that was what I had to do and then he would go in my mouth and that would make me swallow that stuff and I would I'd be gagging on that nasty stuff and he would laugh at me think it was a joke and I would run to the bathroom and start throwing up. And he would laugh at me. He made me, he made me feel like I was just a trash. I told him I didn't want to do it. It was against my religious beliefs. And he said that I had to do it anyway. And he would do it in front of my kids. We would be on our way to visit my parents. He didn't want me to do it in the car. The officer told me to get in the car and he directed Jim to pull around the patrol car and uh, further ahead into a grassy area in front of where we were. When you got to the trooper's car, was that area also dark? Yes, very. What happened next? He asked me had I had sexual intercourse with Jim just then. And I was a little foggy, I said, I thought for a minute, and then I said, uh, no, because I remember having a tampax earlier. And he told me that he would have to check and see, and he told me to lower my jeans. Did you lower your jeans when he told you to? Yes. After you lowered your jeans, what happened next? He used his finger to check and see if I had a tampax on. What did he do with his finger? He inserted it in my vagina. What happened after that? He told me that he did not feel anything, but there was another way that I could be in the car and on my way. Did he indicate to you what he wanted you to do so you could be on your way? Yes, ma'am, he did. I don't remember the exact words, but I knew that he meant oral sex. What did you do when you got behind the patrol car? I went down on... I was down on my knees. He removed his penis by unzipping his pants. And I, we were engaged in oral sex. He had a knife at my throat and he kept saying, get naked. What kind of knife was it to the best of your memory? Uh, it looked like a kitchen knife. Do you remember about how long it was? Uh, about that long. And Did you say anything to him? I kept begging him just to leave me alone. Did he leave you alone? No. What were you thinking when the defendant woke you up and held a knife to your throat and had to take your clothes off? I was scared. What was the next thing that the defendant said to you? He just, he didn't really talk that much. He just kept touching me and kissing me. And Where did the defendant touch you? All over my body. Could you 
you tell us in a little more detail? Um, all my breasts and in between my legs. And... Did he, what part of his body did he touch you with? His hands. Did he ever touch you with his mouth? Yes. Where did he touch you with his mouth? My breasts and in between my legs. Did the defendant ever have you do anything to him? Yes. What was that? He made me put my hand on his private areas. On his? Yes. Did you do that? Yes. Did the defendant ever make any threats to you? Yes. He told me to act like I was enjoying it and not to make any noise so he'd kill me. After the act you've already described, did the defendant do anything else? Yes. What did he do? He made me have intercourse with him. Now, did you ever attempt to yell? No. Why not? I was scared he'd kill me. When the defendant had intercourse with you, did he say anything to you? Uh, yeah. What he you asked if I'd like it better if it was big and black. Did you respond to the defendant anyway? I just, I just kept begging him to leave me alone.